everybody, my name's Kaylee and I work at the Royal Saskatchewan Museum. I'm joined today by my friend Bubs, the great horned owl, and Bubs, today I thought we'd look at a very special owl. I'm excited. Hoot, hoot. Well, it's someone I think you'll know pretty well. Come on, let's take a look. I know who. Hold on, Bubs. Let's give everyone else a chance to find the owl. Do you see the owl? Ooh, up there on the tree branch. It's a great horned owl. Great job, Bubs. This exhibit looks at the Aspen Parklands and features a great horned owl, which is the most common owl species here in Saskatchewan. My favorite food are mice and rabbits. And as you grow older, the size of prey you can hunt grows as well. It's not uncommon for great horned owls to attack small mammals up to the size of a Canadian goose. That's bigger than I am. That's bigger than an adult great horned owl. Is it light out or dark when great horned owls hunt? Dark out, which means we're nocturnal. That's right, thanks, bub. Great horned owls will use a nest another bird has built, preferring nests found in open areas with trees, abandoned buildings, or ledges. They can lay up to five eggs as early as March, and it takes between 28 or 30 days for an egg to be incubated. Compared to other owls, great horned owls lay their eggs quite early. Whoa! Most great horned owls don't leave the area that they were hatched in, and can get quite territorial. That's why you've probably never met many other owl bubs. But I am now. I've seen so many different owls. I'm glad we got to look at uh, an owl with ear tufts, finally. Me too, bubs. An owl's ear tufts, or plumicorns, are thought to help them with camouflage and or letting other owls know if an area is safe or has predators. <laughs> what is it, Bubs? I wonder what you'd look like with ear tufts. You mean... like this? Oh, hey, that gives me an idea. Well, Bubs, now that we've looked at the great gray owl, a northern hawk owl, a barred owl, and a great horned owl. I was thinking that we could do an owl craft this week that's based on a stay-at-home owl. Great! For our stay-at-home owl craft, you're going to need a tube from a toilet paper roll, construction paper or paper you can draw on, a pencil, scissors, pencil crayons, googly eyes, white glue, and tape. First, we'll need to trace and draw the parts that will make up our stay-at-home owl. You'll need to trace a larger circle for the base of the owl, a smaller circle for the head of the owl, then draw two feet, two wings, and also a body. Once you've traced and drawn all of these objects, grab a pair of scissors and carefully cut them out. Once you've cut out all the stay-at-home owl's parts, then you can grab your pencil crayons and begin to color them in any which way you like. Once everything's colored in, you'll then use your white glue to put the pieces together. Place the owl feet on top of the base circle and your googly eyes onto your owl head. As you wait for everything to dry, Grab your owl wings and gently fold the end, and then using the white glue, attach them to the toilet paper tube. Once everything is dry, use tape to attach your owl's body to the front of the tube, and then your owl's head at the very top of the tube. Lastly, apply the white glue to the bottom of the toilet paper roll, and then stick it gently onto the base circle. Allow time for drying, and voila! Your stay-at-home owl is complete. Thanks so much for tuning in this week. Please let us know in the comments down below or to the side what your stay-at-home owl turned out like. We'd love to see it. Stay tuned for our National Indigenous History Month content airing on our social medias such as Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or even TikTok now. Bye! Woo!